Right, we do have some serious um, information which needs to be shared. Um, apologies in advance, um, I'm currently on antibiotics, this is day three now, and um, just please bear with me, it's going to be quite difficult to read um, all of this stuff because um, there's a few emails from insiders within it, in the NHS who have reached out to me urging this to be made public, all right? So I'm not sure if this has gone public before, but um, please share this video. If any of you guys working within the NHS have seen similar um, occurrences within their own eyes, shall we say, please email me. The email address is below this video. So without further ado, we're gonna get straight into it. Like I said, a few emails and we're just gonna get through them. They are quite lengthy and I am struggling a bit, so please bear with me, okay? So, hi Funky, please keep anonymous, but heads up into the NHS. Um, it's gone FUBAR, so that is um, a military acronym, so if you don't know what that is, look it up. Um, you reported the lack of oxygen cylinders. I can state that this is actually true. The blank um, place did run out at one point, as did many others. My unit had only three small cylinders left. I do need to advise, however, that it's just cylinders. We have very large holding cylinders um, for piping to the wall. However, as many people are being treated in every nook and cranny, there's no fixed outlet. Hence, they need a cylinder, and that is the major issue. Also, um, most of those no um, presenting are needing oxygen. Um, secondly, one hospital nearby asked those attending to bring their own medications and even bandages as, as they have run out. Whoa, that's scary. I'm guessing it's supply chains, but we're gonna read on through the email. Um, as they are completely run out, my unit is now regularly running out of supplies, and this is for a few reasons. Number one, patients who should be on a ward are here with us using our resources for extended periods of time. Two, there are major supply issues with everything within the NHS. Well, that has been mentioned a few times before, but this seems to be getting more um, commonplace now. Could you please mention staffing? As no one is addressing all the staff who have had long-term the issue are basically all being shafted um, until they can sack them. These are staff are waiting for care like civvies. Um, this seems to be from a former military person and she goes on to say, and it's a huge issue. As I said, um, it's not being highlighted by the legacy press and it needs to be. Here is a post by a colleague from um, an online um, media sharing app, shall we say. Um, I would like to see and inform the community we are knackered, traumatised and broken, but we are here fighting because without us, everyone dies alone. Posted anonymously by an A&E doctor. Okay? I am writing this because I am angry. Actually, more than that, I am effing livid. I am an A&E reg. I presume it's regular, with nine plus years experience in A&E, both here and overseas. This morning um, was the first time ever <laughs> that I cried in my car after a shift. <sighs> wow. I was on notes over New Year's period, um, but the New Year um, was not the issue. Every shift is like this nowadays. Um, where five years ago we had 50 patients in the department on handover at night time. Now we have 180. It used to be around 20 patients to see with a one to two hour shift for clinician. Now it's 60 to 70 with a 10 hour wait. People used to lose their minds if patients were coming up to four hour breaches. Blimey, you can only imagine what that must be like. Um, last night, 60% of the patients in A&E had been there for more than 12 hours. Some more than 40. No way. That's insane. Um, many I saw the night before are still in the same place when I come on shift. 
no triage or OBS, which is, I believe, is observations, after two hours of arrival, no bloods, no ECGs or gas for four hours. Regularly finding people in for waiting room after four hours with initial um, gases showing hyperkalamia, if I've got that wrong, I'm sorry, or severe acidosis or hypoglycemia. 87 year olds coming in after falls, sitting on chairs for 18 hours. Other elderly patients lying in for their own urine for hours because there's no staff or even room to change them into something dry. As a reg, which I can only presume is regular, um, in charge of the shift, I had on multiple occasions to help a sole nurse in the area change patients patients by holding a sheet around the bed because we have um, to do it in the middle of the corridor. People lying on the floor because there's no chairs left, trolleys parked literally wherever they can put them in. <clears throat> Things have been getting even worse for the last three months. Five weeks I came home raging to my partner that people are sitting in their own urine for hours and it's so inhumane. <sighs> this is hard to read. Trust me, and it just goes on. Um, now we've got to the point where people are actually dying. <sighs> people who have been in A&E for two to three days. The media and public might blame for A&E nurses and doctors for this, but honestly, what the F are we meant to do with 180 people in a department built for 50 people with eight nurses rather than a minimum staffing of 12. One or two nurses per area giving meds, doing observations, trying to provide basic cares for 25 to 30 people, an absolute impossibility. And there's less nurses every week, because honestly, why would you put yourself through all this day after day? Like I said, I've had other um, NHS staff reaching out to me um, via email talking about PTSD is absolutely going skyrocket as we speak. So I carry on. Resus patients are quickly assessed and stepped down to make room for the next um, pre-alert. Going to the area with those same poor nurses already overstretched, now inheriting a severely unwell patient. We need to accept the truth. The NHS isn't broken, it's actually broken. And the same swear word who broke it um, are doing reality TV shows and writing books about how they saved the NHS while refusing to increase nursing pay. <sighs> Man, I'm, I'm livid right now reading this. This is very hard. We've got to crack on. Um, we try and shovel... SHIT with spoons whilst they pour it in with dump trucks. Wow, what an analogy that is. The NHS, as we know, is dead. And it breaks my heart because it's a beautiful system. It shouldn't be like this. And for those of us who have been around for longer than five years, no, it always wasn't like this. The public have no idea. They really don't know how dangerous this all is. Um, when they come in, they're horrified but most of the population don't know how bad it is. This could be their mum on a trolley for 17 hours, their wife, son or daughter or father. I genuinely feel it's now our responsibility to speak out. <sighs> we don't, well this is, we don't fall fear that it makes our hospital look bad and harm our careers but it's not a hospital problem, it's a national problem. And it's a problem brought about us um, by politics and for those people in power. We need to shine a light on what they've done, make the public so angry that they demand change. Massive recruitment of nurses through a proper wage, paid uni fee, parking fees, um, free Nando's, if that's what it takes, it will be a start. If anyone has any idea how we can coordinate some kind of campaign to show the state of the emergency departments in the UK right now, please send Funky an email because um, he can't work on this much longer. And more importantly, I am not sure the patients can survive it. 
from a nurse. Now that is one email. I'm gonna to go to a second one now. Email two, hi, how are you? I saw the Intel show um, the other night and wanted to bring you up to speed on the situation with ambulance NHS and for shortages of O2 oxygen activated charcoal which is one of the paracetamol overdose um, meds that they use. I and I and I think this is a mistype. I and other medications that are being harder to source due to major supply issues, like we have mentioned before. Um, like I said, these are insiders reaching out to me. I don't know these personally, and they wish to remain anonymous for obvious reasons. Okay. Um, so let me carry on with this email. Um, also, why the ambulance service is becoming increasingly demoralizing environment to be in. Hi, my name is Blank. You may know me as Blank. I'm a paramedic and I have been working within the NHS ambulance service for over a decade. Since the 2020 issue, the ambulance service continues to maintain high standards of care and treatment for which I am proud. All paramedics require a university education continued practical assessments and up-to-date education. However, due to the demand on us, we are losing experienced clinicians by the droves. Wow, like I said about the police, I've got friends in the police who contact me as well. And lots of people are leaving. And this isn't no fear porn. This isn't no BS, this is the truth. And I'm not sure if you're hearing this in the mainstream because I don't read mainstream, okay? If you do, Maybe you can send me an email or leave a comment below and we can see what the mainstream are pushing, okay? So, yes, we are losing experienced clinicians by the droves and are being replaced by student paramedics through a massive recruitment process. This is diluting the skill set and people are coming into the service are destroying it. And for management, know this, because they don't want to pay higher NHS pay bans it's basically what um, this guy is describing as bums on seats, cheap labour at the patient's risk. So I believe that the, the NHS their fundamentals are the patient's health is priority. So maybe that has taken a turn since it looks like it has been privatised. Okay. In regards to the O2 oxygen and other meds, we're now having to be conservative with oxygen. Wow. Now let me just reiterate that. The most important thing that anyone needs to assess in an emergency situation is breathing and oxygen obviously plays a huge fundamental part in that and to, to hear that they're having major problems with oxygen that should scare everyone listening to this video right now as there is a national shortage in regards to the other medicines we can no longer give activated charcoal for paracetamol overdose this is because we do not use it that often and it goes out of date on a regular basis. However, we are now being told to just scoop and run, which is a term, um, with patients, which is a term used to get them on and get them gone to hospital. Um, certain bands of medications and equipment are now being used for the worst cases only. I became a paramedic as part of my training as a prepper. Wow and to help people. We are now being restricted by the bean counters. Waiting times at A&E departments in blank are the worst that I've ever seen. I've spent my entire shift with my patient on the ambulance because there is literally no space in A&E. Currently, you ready for this? Currently there is a 26 hour wait to be seen at my MTC, which is called a Major Trauma Center. I am writing to give you as much information as you want. Please keep me anonymous. Also, this is a very short email. It's not to do with the NHS, but it's to do with health, okay? Um, this is, again, anonymous, sent anonymous, it says here. Um, Hi, I have, I've had confirmation from my MP that those in the disability group who cannot work are being forced to work but those that can are going to have to go on courses and prepare for work or lose their benefits if they don't another email okay so this was sent to me the other day um 
wishes to remain anonymous, so forgive me for blanking out certain things. I work for the blah, 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 um, Ambulance NHS Trust. My job title is, da, 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 I'm just going to put assistant, okay? Um, this role is basically a pit crew member for the ambulances. We restock and resupply medical kit and equipment for the frontline ambulances and get them ready for frontline duties. I have today been made aware of yet more shortages of the medical oxygen and we as a trust are having difficulty in sourcing a regular supply. This can have very dangerous consequences for any patient having breathing difficulties that call 999. I have supplied some screenshots to this email to um, an email chain for your um, viewing, um, but I have to ask that they are not shared or made public. Um, it, was, uh, it would not be difficult for their employer to pinpoint where the leaks have come from. So once again, it's a reoccurring thing. You know, there's just emails coming up everywhere. Okay. So I think that's going to be all for now. So if any of you guys um, working with in the NHS, um, whether it's um, ambulances, on the front line in A&E, if it's in anything to do with hospitals or indeed um, doctor's surgeries, okay, anyone who is um, hearing or seeing any sort of problems which they feel the public should be made aware about, please email me. The email address is underneath this video and I guarantee you I will keep you anonymous as most of you have asked to be and that is how it's always going to be, okay? So please share this video far and wide. Lots of people need to hear this urgent information being shared to me by frontline NHS staff. You guys take care, thanks for watching, and stay funky.